everyone, welcome back to Oz Hoopers TV, episode 8. Uh, this week we've got on Tamri Wigness. Um, I'm a big fan of Tamri's. Uh, last year he signed to the Brisbane Bullets and he's currently playing his uh, rookie season there. Um, he just got announced to the uh, under-19 Emus roster. Um, has probably been Mr. Australia since he was like, what, 12 years old? Um, yeah. So big name. Um, we're excited to have him on. How you been, Hesh? Yeah, man, I'm I'm, I'm good, man. Um, been been keeping an eye on on that emu situation, which we'll talk about. Yeah, talk about later as well, and a few other things. Obviously, we got to get to as well, man. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty pretty busy in Australian basketball. I mean, NBL one's popping off. Um, the whole Charlotte situation, which we'll get into next. Um, ben Simmons, Joe Ingles, tearing it up in the playoffs. Yeah. So let's get let's get into the Charlotte situation real quick because. I woke up that morning and I checked my phones. The first thing I saw, and I was like shocked. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what exactly happened. For anyone that doesn't know, um, Shyla Heal, who was picked eighth by the Chicago Sky in the WNBA, uh, daughter of Shane Hill, uh, NBL and Aussie legend, uh, has been cut, has been traded, sorry, by the Chicago Sky to the Dallas Wings and then immediately waived by the Dallas Wings. Um, after four four games she played, she didn't play the first one. So I think they were one and five. Um, she played a total of 31 minutes. What what do you think the what do you think the goal is? Man, that's crazy. I, I'm the same as you, man. When I heard about it, I was shocked. Yeah. I thought this is like cutthroat. I was thinking eighth pick in the draft, and they just they get cut. That's crazy, man. Like, you know what I mean? First thing I thought was like. Far out for a young, up and coming star. Like that's a tough pill to swallow, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, like you know, she's been on cloud nine. She gets drafted. Yep, start my career in the in the best league in the world. And then like yeah, before you know it, it's it's kind of uh, this episode of this part of it. I guess it's over. She has to re- reconsider her options now and figure out if she can get another gig over there or if she's gonna come back here. Man, I I just I know a couple of people in. Like that are close to Shyla and they would kind of tell me the situation. I don't want to reveal too many details because I'll, I'll leave it for her to kind of, you know, to her situation. But I heard it was cutthroat too, the way they did it. Like it wasn't just like they sat her down. It was just like, boom, yeah, you've been traded. Boom. Oh yeah, no, you're waived now. And it's just like job done. That's it. Taken. So I don't know, like you're right. You know, 31 minutes, minimal practice sessions, minimal games. And then you drafted her on talent and potential. Like, you know what I mean? Like it just doesn't know. make sense. It's so weird, the whole situation. I feel like in the NBA, the whole, the whole thing that kind of has me like shocked about it is like how unprofessional it is. Like you have scouts there hired to like scout these people for years. Like they would have been looking at her since she started playing professionally um, and to get her for two practices and play her 20 minutes and just say, no, nah, you're out of here. Like, I think there's more to it. In my opinion, I could be wrong, obviously, and I probably am wrong, but I yeah. think there's more behind this story than we think. There might have been maybe, an altercation maybe. behind it, behind doors. I don't know. Yeah. But it just seems very odd to me. I feel like if you're a top eight pick in the NBA, even if you're yeah. complete, even if they get you after years of scouting and you yeah. are like not fitting in with the team and you are complete garbage, which Charlotte isn't, yeah. they still keep you for three to four years and then they'll ship you out of there. Not f- yeah, yeah. not two games. Like she played two games, minimal minutes. Like, it's very odd in my opinion. Yeah. So the process... Like, I think, obviously, they traded her. So, mm. Chicago, obviously, like, I understand that. I understand if, like, they got offered something for Shyla and they were like, oh, we can make a move on this right now and this is better for our team. Cool. That's, it's a business and they yeah. have to make, you know, they got to make moves. And even though she's the eighth pick, doesn't mean you're going to stay in that one team. It's just crazy to me how a number eight pick or, you know, lottery pick, basically, in the, in the WNBA can be out of the league within a month, not even, like two weeks of being mm. involved there. Like, it's, it's crazy to think, the trade, I don't really have a problem with because that's the GM doing whatever moves they need to make. It's more so like the trade and then Dallas just waving them straight. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. I think there's more to and it. I, was, I don't know. And then I'm thinking like, aren't there guaranteed contracts? So even if she's waived, does that mean her contract gets paid out? Or is that just like, no, you only get paid for the game you Must played? Or, I don't know. I don't know what the situation is, but you'd think that they at least let her sit up. Like if you don't rate her game, which I doubt they would be like that because she's a bucket. If yeah. you don't rate the game, like, why wouldn't you just be like, all right, sit on the end of the bench? You got some, a young girl there that's clearly going to be back in that league in the next couple of years, like at some point in time. 
she's gonna she's arguably like she's gonna be on the the Opals team, man. You know, like yeah, exactly. Starting in the Opals team, so she'll be back yeah. in that league. Like, why wouldn't you let that young talent grow and be a part of your league and be a part of your team? I just don't I mean, get it. I don't know. If she's on a rookie contract, why wouldn't a massive like a even like a big team or someone with one more space? Why wouldn't you pick up an eighth pick? Yeah, just sit it. on the end of the bench and work with individual coaches and I don't get it. I really don't get it. But Shane Hill came yeah. out with Shane Hill came out with a tweet. Um and he pretty much said two practices, 20 odd minutes. Um team lost five straight. Um so they cut their two first round picks. So they cut yeah. someone else as well as Shyla. Um but he said and their third bad. rookie too, who wasn't a first round pick but a second round pick or something like that. Yeah. They just cleared all their youngsters, you know. So weird. I don't really, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that's the thing then. But he said, great experience. That'll make her even tougher. Um, and he also said that she was cut at the airport before departing for a road trip. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. That's what... But yeah, mm-hmm. good luck to Shyla. She'll she'll bounce back from it. Um, she'll be yeah, back. We got to get her on here. We got We got to hear the, the juice, man, and let it Facts. let her vent it out. Let her have her peace, have her say, and get back yeah. to get back in that league, man. Yes, NBL finals. I think we're on our last game for each team at the moment. Um, we've got Melbourne sitting in first. They just took over Perth and locked in their first seed. Locked in, yep. Yep. Perth second, Hawks third, and Southeast fourth. Um, Kings have a chance to make it, uh, but according to NBL, Bullets have to beat the Southeast Melbourne by 80 or more. They got to beat them by eighty or more. Yeah, so I don't think Sydney Kings are making it. Um, but if yeah. Southeast Melbourne win, I think they play Perth, and then or Hawks will play even Melbourne. If they, even if they don't win, they just got to not yeah. lose by eight. <laughs> Do you think anyone um, else has a chance other than you've been sitting on Perth this whole season? But now Cotton's gone. Do you think anyone has a chance to take it? Yes, I do. Now, yes, is Cotton ruled out for the entire final series? Yeah, he came out in a conference and just said it's over. Not trying to risk it. Um, the injury's bad, and he could hardly walk it. On a video I saw, he was in training, could yeah. hardly walk. So he pretty much said, "It's there's no chance I'm coming back." Right. I hope that. I mean, you never know. These things could be like mind games, or just like playing the media a little bit. Nah, so nah. He seemed game. pretty confident. He came out. He said, "I'm not playing no games. Like it's done." So cool. sometimes, I, sometimes I would, I would, man. Sometimes it's like you know the speculation in the media hovering around practice and your teammates aren't focused it's better just to come out and be like yeah this is what it is yeah imagine just like finals comes around and he's like healthy <laughs> ready, ready yeah. to go bust some people um no nah, yeah if without cotton i think it opens it up to be honest like i think cotton's like a we all know he's mvp candidate in the conversation so it's a big big loss for perth but they've got the the goods to to still be very very competitive and i wouldn't be surprised if they win it but yeah it does open it up I really like the way the Hawks have finished the season, man. Mm. Like, um, they've just, man, like Harvey's on his back, man. Mm. Killing I think, out there. I think that's a big thing that not many of these other teams have. I think Hawks have that full, full on guy that, yeah. I mean, Melbourne have Gold, Golding and um, Landau, but I think Harvey's just like. Harvey's different, bro. Because yeah. any given night, it could be 50 piece. You know what I mean? Like, he yeah. could just come out and go whack, 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 end the game in the first quarter. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still liking my X factor of Southeast Melbourne. I said yeah, a couple weeks ago they've had, it. they've had a couple, like, um, they've had a couple weird losses. Um, they came close yeah. to breakers the other night as well. So it's a little bit worrying, yeah. but I think in a series of three games, I yeah. think they're going to be a bit of trouble, especially if they're playing Perth without Cotton. I don't know. It could just be me, but yeah. I'm, I'm still, I'm still got Southeast Melbourne to upset. I think I think that's reasonable. Like you could you could pick anyone. If any one of those four teams win, I wouldn't be overly shocked. I think it's pretty kind of open. But if I had to put my money on it, I'm still gonna go with Perth, dude. Okay. I'm still yeah. gonna I'm still gonna pick Perth as my number one. Um, just with the, the depth and you know, Mooney and Mooney you know, Finals MVP. MVP. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, probably, probably has to be man. Probably again, you know, averaging twenty and ten or something like that yeah. for the whole final. If I'm if I'm sticking with Southeast, I'm gonna to have to probably go Mitch Creek MVP. Wow, not Kiefer Sucks. Nah, Kiefer Sucks has been turning up, but I think in I think in three games, I think Creek will be very solid. I think there'll be a game where Kiefer Sucks. I want to just just to keep it. I just don't make make sure that people are aware, dude. I don't. I'm not sleeping on Melbourne either. Yeah, dude, I'm not sleeping on Melbourne. They're always they're always good, but I just Man, think... Shay, I watched them live the other night. 
Shay Ely plays defense, bro. Like this guy clamped up. He was getting all up in Casper's stuff. Casper's still bucketing in, but Shay Ely plays defense. Chris Goulding can light up. Jock Landau can just dominate both sides of the floor. I think yeah. Scotty Hobson's gonna have to turn up a little bit as well if they want to win. Yes, Scotty Hobson. Yeah. But yeah, man. So to answer your question, I have no idea. But yeah. if I had to pick, I'll go Perth still. Yeah. It's very up there now that Bryce Cotton's out, but if I had to pick one, I'm gonna yeah. go Dark Horse and go Southeast Melbourne. All right. What about NBA? You've been watching? Yeah, of course, man. I've been living <laughs> off that. That's all I do. Um, uh, who, so who, who, you got, who you got in the finals? Who you got winning the finals? And who's your finals MVP? Uh, first, I'd just like to say that eight years, nine years, man, I've been like LeBron, nah, nah, Warriors will get him. Nah, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. nah, Miami can't win it. Miami aren't going to win this one. Like, they're going to lose this and that. Kept proving me wrong. Or oh, with his roster, no, nah, he's got no chance. Kept proving me wrong. Kept proving me wrong. Kept proving me wrong. Even last year. Did they play in the finals last year? Hey. I'm drawing a blank. Oh, Miami. yeah, in the bubble. Yeah. In the bubble. I was like, Miami looked good. Jimmy Butler's, LeBron's historically had a bit of trouble with Butler. He clamps up a lot of superstars and does a good job. And he was locked in that whole bubble thing. And Miami were riding this wave. And I was like, Lakers aren't going to win it. Prove me wrong again. And they ate Miami too. That was light for them. So this year, I was like, you heard me. Every episode, I've been saying the Lakers, the Lakers, the Lakers. So I don't know what to do anymore, man. Like, I just I thought I'd jump in on LeBron, and then he they just went down, man, in that series. So my pick is out. But now with the updated schedule as it is, um, I have, I don't know. I think I think Brooklyn, James Harden went down today. Yeah, he went down, but it was a, it was a hamstring. I think he'll be back soon. To be yeah, I've read anything about it. I yeah, hope he is, but if Brooklyn not, Brooklyn. okay, Brooklyn. Brooklyn um, at the east. Who's at the west? Dude, if the Clippers, man, if they get yeah. through the maps at home, they could do damage, dude. Yeah, I, really I can't like... argue. I can't argue with you. I'm, I'm going Clippers. I'm going Clippers yeah. at the west, Nets out the east, I think. Clippers. Well, the Phoenix did impress me, man. Chris Paul... And and Devin Booker really impressed me, man. DeAndre Ayton as well. Like they look, they look good too. Yeah. Um, um, my sleeper pick is Denver, and I know this sounds bad because I have no Murray, and they are going yeah. up against the Suns right now. But I just think Denver can sneak in a couple wins, and they might get Suns. I reckon. 100%. I don't know. Jokic is very good. They played very good against um Portland. Oh. Damian Lillard dropped what fifty five, and they still lost. Yeah. Like I don't know. Denver are looking no, alright. Dude, I could, I could, I think every team has a chance except like. I don't think Atlanta. Atlanta I think are, are gonna, you know, they're gonna struggle to go to the finals. Yeah. Like that, whoever wins the Milwaukee, Milwaukee, um, Buck series now, I think we'll get through the East. Yeah, I can't see who are Atlanta playing Philly. Philly. I can't see Philly going there without yeah, Embiid. No. I don't know how bad Embiid is, but no, they said he did a bit of his. I think it was something to do with his meniscus in his left knee, but yeah. they haven't ruled him out. What about Utah? We haven't spoken about them. You think they have a chance? Utah's hard because every time I look at their team, I, I always say, like, this team is, like, very deep. Um, yeah. they, they can definitely go far. And this year, especially, I just feel like they took Memphis. Like, Donovan was out the first game and then they swept them after that. Um, yeah. Donovan's looking very good. I don't know. I just I, I don't know. I just feel like right. it comes down to stars in the end. And I feel like... The only team that's going to beat the Nets at this point was the King, but he's gone, and the yeah. Clippers. So oh, yeah, all right. I don't I'll know. But you. if if who's coming out the West, Jazz yeah, have to play Clippers next. Yeah. So I don't know. I have no idea. It's very up. I'm very up there, but I'm going to say Clippers. I'm going to say Clippers. I'm with you. I'm going to go Clippers, Nets, NBA Finals. Nets win with KD finals MVP. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a prayer, but yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to agree with you exactly. All right. Um, earlier in this week, the under-19 Emus roster was announced. Um, I've got the roster on my phone. What are your thoughts on the roster? Any surprises? How far do you think they will go? For anyone that doesn't know, um, the it's played in Latvia. It's the under-19 World Cup. So the best players under 19 um, in the Australian roster. So they are in the same pool as the US, which is unfortunate. Turkey and Mali. Is it Mali? 
Mali, that's the yeah, one. Mali, who you said is pretty tough. Yeah, yeah, from what I've heard and from what I've seen um, a little bit. Of, talk to Tamri about that too when he gets on. Yeah. My, my roster, first... Man. Yeah, you your thoughts? Um, the roster, in my opinion, no surprises. Um, there was a first roster that came out and then they adjusted it to add the NBL players and, and so forth. Um, and then they cut it again after that. There was a training camp roster. One surprise, no Tyrese Proctor. Yeah, uh, interesting. I don't know. Think he's yeah, I do. But it's then again... Two, years. two, three years, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. Yeah. I think that contributed, contributed to it. So, I don't know. No surprises to me. I think that this team will go very far. Um, I'm, not, I'm not surprised either. I, I think I, I said it. I posted all about it. I think these guys have a legitimate chance. This is a, yeah. from my end. Like this class, man, is the most stacked class I have seen. I'm, I'm, I've only been really, really into my junior basketball for like three years now, two to three years. Yeah, I'm really following it. And now this year, I've really taken off. I've been following a lot of other states and things like that. So I mean, I haven't been overly educated on on years past, but I can't imagine even future years being as stacked as as this current roster like you're looking at like five guys maybe that five six guys that could have some potential like serious serious basketball careers man mm-hmm. like you know like i'm talking nba type of hype potentially you never know yeah. um and giddy's not even on the roster and he's yeah. eligible yeah exactly he's protecting, his, protecting his draft stock which no, is no, no. i think i think he'll be drafted by then he'll oh, be really? he'll be like i think the draft is in july is it not yeah, which, I think the tournament August? goes from like they take off 26th of June and they get back end of July. Okay, so he'll be he'll be probably preparing for the draft. So yeah, maybe he's protecting yeah, himself. The draft, I, I think. I, I mean, it's better. Don't yeah. get injured. Don't get on the yeah. silly. Don't have a bad game. You know, he's lottery right now. But anyway, it's not about giddy. We've spoken enough. Yeah. <laughs> the roster's good, man. The roster's good. No surprises. I like it. Interesting note. Nine of the twelve players. Uh, non-white, like there's a lot of kind of African descent, indigenous yeah. descent players, which is rare. I was talking to Buali the other day and he was like, it's going to be funny, like they're going to show up to the tournament. They're going to be like, this is Australia? Like, what the <laughs> hell? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but it, I mean, I, I guess it's, I don't know whether it's an, it's an evolution in, in, in things or whether it's just the younger guys from first generation countries, the parents who've been here now, they're going yeah. up and they were born here or whatever. But I mean, they've, they've picked a, a great team, man. Yeah, it's good to see. Um, yeah, sure. pick your starting five. My now starting five. I'll let you know mine real quick. Now it's yeah, tough to me... pick because I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pick mine based on if I'm the Australian coach and who I think he's gonna pick. Oh, okay. So not you, not Coach nah, Reese. This this is what I think the Ross the starting five will be. Not me. Not Coach Reese. Yeah. So. Oh, it's hard to it's hard to explain. So not against USA, I think they'll run a different roster compared to against Mali and Turkey. Interesting. Against Mali and Turkey, they're gonna run Tamri at the one. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it's very hard. If you look at this oh, roster, if you get this roster up on your phone. I'm looking at it, man. I'm looking at I'm gonna line. put oh. I'm gonna put rain at the two. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna put Dyson at the three. Now wow. it's not going to be it's not going to be small forward basketball. It's going to be like Ben Simmons playing the three at Philly. Yeah, okay. Then at the four, we're going to put Blake Jones. He's going to be ball in hand. You get you're getting the buckets. Yeah. And then at the five, we might have to run yak yak. Okay. Very interesting lineup against usa though this is my lineup we're going to run dyson at the point we're going to run a colder gak at the two colder gak want... at the two yes we're going to run big everyone's big on that team we're going to run big a colder gak at the two yep. we're going to run david aquera at the three yeah blake at the four yak yak at yeah. the five damn you just changed that whole thing up yeah i'm going to go I'm gonna go lengthy team. Uh, I don't know. Dude, I, you could pick any. I, I, any hold on, hold on. I, just to um, say about my pick, a colder gak at the two. I've never actually seen a colder gak play. All I've seen is his um NBL when he comes on in the last minute or so. I've seen a couple of his clips um, yeah. in high school, but 
yeah, all we're running is defense and yeah. I get you. Now uh, I, think that's okay. I mean, I, I'm going to take a slightly different approach. I don't yeah. know what the coach is going to be thinking. Yeah. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I'm going to go. Is my team that I will that I would run with? Yeah, let's hear it. It's dude. I might go with. Uh, I might go with Boali at the one. Okay. That's probably just the exposure I've had to him. I think he's yeah. come up big time. Sure. It, but yeah, I think he's he's yeah. at the one. I like Rain's game at the two. I like Rain at the two. Stretch the floor, like you know, he's a sniper. He'd probably be the best shooter in the competition. I'll give yeah. him. So you got to got to have him there. Um, I like um. My four or five are uh, uh, Blake Jones and a cold gap. I think those okay. are guys that I'm going to pick in my front court. Yeah. At three spot, I think if you go small, like you can run a three guard rotation out of that. So you can put Tamri there. Yeah. Uh, just so they can, you know, him and Buali interchange at the one, whoever gets it, the other one goes type of thing. Mm. I, I like the pace that he plays. I saw him play for the Bullets last night, actually. That was the first time I saw him live up close. Yeah. And I was impressed just the way he. he Pounds a ball and advances it and plays defense. So I think yeah. you can go small with him, but if 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 not, I'd probably have to go with David Aquera to three. Yeah, I think I like he's, he's yeah, I think he's solid at the wing can defend multiple positions. So mm-hmm. I think there's a couple of options there. Um, I don't know. And then I look at it and I go, far out. Taron is crafty, man. Like yeah, he's Taron's tough, nice. bro. Like, he can, he can play. Jalen Galloway is obviously super super tough, yeah. like athletic. Trying to you're not, you're not starting. You're not starting Dyson. And that's why I'm looking at that. I just miss oh, Dyson. Right. <laughs> yeah. Dyson's another one. Like, yeah, you probably have to make a case for it. Um, Jalen Galloway's yeah. real nice too. <laughs> I haven't seen yeah. Jalen Galloway's nice too. I haven't seen much of him, but yeah. He's tough. Super you athlete, could, bro. You could possi- possibly run him in my tall lineup at the two instead of a colder gap. So this is one of those rare I've never, I've never seen a colder gap play, so I might run Jalen Galloway at the two instead. Yeah. I think this is one of those rare teams where it's like, I don't. I, don't, I think everyone's going to be playing like twenty-one minutes, twenty minutes, yeah. nineteen minutes. Like no one's rough. really going to play their one and a half minutes and just yeah. be a development player or something. Like everyone's going to play, bro. Like you're looking at it and there's like there's no real weakness, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually really impressed. I'm not just yeah. saying that. Like I, I think this team could 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 go all the way. Let's hope so. Anyway, it'd yeah. be dope, yeah. man. You know. Facts. I think it's Blake yeah. Jones's time to turn up. I'm big fan of Blake. He said, second medal, second gold of the year. Yeah, facts. Nationals and then come to this. So let's see. All right, we'll get Tamri on. We're going to hear he's starting five in a second. I'm keen to hear who he says. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. They forgot we gave them hope. I was spending time on that corner trying to set me on honey though. Straight with that goggle, my hips to the cop, we were running up. I look at these niggas and I can tell they are not one of us. I'm riding the bed like a nigga that came right in front of the bus. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? Hi, how you been? Not been too good, bad, been good yourself? Um, first of all, I want to introduce you to Hesh. He's going to be co-hosting the show with me today. How you doing, man? Uh, nice to meet you, bro. You too, Tommy. You too. Um, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. We know it's um very time-consuming, but we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, nah, no worries, no worries. Uh, first of all, congratulations on being uh, named to the under-19 EMU squad uh, earlier in the week. Um, sure. We mentioned it before. Um, it's going to be played in Latvia. Um, I think the, the warm-up is in L- Las Vegas, I think they mentioned, which is pretty sick. Mm, yeah. Um, so me and Hesh were discussing our starting five. Let's hear yours. You got the roster on you? Starting five. Me one. Yep. <laughs> Oh, that's actually... It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, no, it's it there, is man. tough. Like, yeah. What the hell? You could yeah. go anywhere and you're not wrong. That is actually tough. Yo, that's actually a good question. Yeah. I, I like the, I like the middle one, though. <laughs> Straight forward. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to get back to that. Because oh, I cool. didn't even see... The, like, I didn't even get to the camp to, to see the boys and all that. But yeah. actually... Me one, yeah. Now we have to run it back. Yeah, Jeez, that's we'll come question. back to we'll come back to the question. It's hard because everyone plays different positions. Like you yeah, can play Dyson yeah. anywhere, but yeah, exactly we'll true. Um, Australia's in the same pool as the US, Turkey, and Mali. Who has said it's pretty decent last year? You said Hash. Yeah, they finished second, and they to USA. They got the silver last time, didn't they? 
Yeah, Alex. yeah. So we end up beating. That's a funny thing. We end up beating them by oh, really? on a buzzer. Yeah. Okay. So we end up beating Mali, and then Mali turned up into the final. So that was kind of devastating. But we choked up to uh, Lithuania. That's what we choked up to. Yeah. So that was pretty. That was pretty. Yeah, tough. Seeing them um, in the final. With the with the talent on the roster, I feel like you guys can go far. Um, what do you what do you think the chances are of winning gold? Oh, for sure, it's, it's number one. Like every time we pull up to Worlds, I think that's obviously the main goal to put to um to get the number one spot. But yeah, but that's the thing. Like I haven't seen our boys yet, but I, with with the talent we got for sure. Like I think the guard spots like were were real good. Take take it take us back a little bit, man. When was the when was the first time you represented Australia? And talk about what that that feeling was when you got picked to to put on the green and gold for the first time. Jeez, what was this? This was I think my first trip was Asia qualifiers. Uh, that was the yeah Asia qualifiers. That was me, Luke, Travis, um, Swaka. Yeah, what age was, was that? That was under seventeen. I was bottom age. I think on the seventeenth, on the seventeenth, yeah, pretty sure on the seventeenth. But yeah, but yeah, you know, it's always on the uh, represent your country. Like you get goosebumps just like for me, that was my first time goosebumps, like representing my country. It didn't like really click that tournament. It was good, like it was real good in China. Um, got, got to travel the world, like get out of the country for the for, for the first time. So yeah, it was an honor to actually chuck on that green and go. You get to for keep sure. the jerseys, eh, with your name on the back, the Australian jerseys. Oh, for sh- for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, like sick jersey. When we got them, I was just like, I've got a friend, this, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. let's take it back to the um early days. How did you fall in love with basketball? Um, so how did I fall in love with basketball? So it's a long story because first my love was um rugby league. So yeah. I used to love rugby league. Like if I had to, if you had to ask me a question back then, it would be. Like when I was young, it'd be like I don't want to be in the state of origin, you know, yeah. playing with Greg and Gliss, like just that, those type of things, like with Dan Gaga and all them. So I kind of really looked up to them. And then, you know, growing up, I always wanted to play against older kids, like trying to. I feel like that's how I developed playing against older kids. So my mom didn't really like like that. I think teachers were just asking me, "Can you play up like the older senior levels?" So I like I was harder than fake signature. I was like, "Yeah, come, I'll play." And my mom just snapped and said, "Like, nah." Like you gotta wait your turn. Mm-hmm. So we end up playing touch football, and then touch football came, and I was like, you know what? Like, let me just try something different. Yeah. Yeah. So t- played, but I uh, played basketball, and then I think the first I played local, like my first year, and then like end up uh, my rep team just end up snatching me up, and then before you know it, the second year I was under the Cairns type ends radar, yeah. and then yeah, and then end up. I always wanted to travel the world, and yeah. rugby league could take you take you places, but not as much as basketball. So, sure. I think that what kind of captured my my eye once I like felt. Mm. When did you realize you, you felt like you were good enough to to make it a career, or like to, to pursue it as a career? Was it that at that rep season when you first got picked, or did it take a couple of years for you to to think about that? Uh, like, oh, yeah, it it didn't click until. I really took it seriously is when I popped off at uh, a nationals in Kilsat. That's the, that's the one where I was like, you know what, like I can really, I can really take this far, you know, if I just yeah. really locked in and, and yeah, just put my, like put my hundred percent into it. Like I can really yeah. take this far. So yeah, it was, it was different. Cause that Kilsat, that nationals, I think really put me on the map as well, but also. How old were you at that one? Made me quick. You must've been like 14, 15. Yeah, I was fourteen. Cause I, I think after that, I just went to the NS. After that, is that the tape? Yeah. Is that the infamous Tamri tape? That's like the best fourteen-year-old player of all time. Tape? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. But that, that's when it like I kind of like really clicked. Cause after like before that, I wasn't really like I wasn't really locked in. Like I was, yeah. I was my passion was something else. But that like really locked in. Ben Simmons ended up com- commenting on like some post or something. So I was like, you know what? Like, yeah. Yes, yeah. it does. Like, how did that like, feel? Obviously. Sorry to cut you off, but how did that feel when being a 14 year old and, and getting getting like I don't know about viral, but it went it went far, man. Like guys are talking about it and you had a bit of hype around you and Ben Simmons commenting. You remember what it felt like being 14 with that tape floating around? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was I, I did pop off like 
it kind of did go viral. And I was just like, I was getting hyped in a little bit, but I think, um, but yeah, I think Nate kind of just pulled me aside and like, you know, you gonna pick like, cause I was, I was, I was like pretty bad. I was just like, Is this Nate Jawa? You know? Yeah, Nate, 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 so Nate, Nate pulled me aside yeah. and was like, and they said like, you see this shit? Like, sorry for passing. Yeah. So you see this? Like, you can only really take this far, like doing all this other stuff with your homeboys and stuff. You can only go so far, so. Yeah, it was a different it was a different feeling. And plus when Ben Simmons commented on that, I was like, yo. Yeah. What's your relationship with Nate Jawa? Nate's been, Nate's been always there. Like he knows the struggles. Like I think that's one thing I can connect with him is like he's grew up from my ends and like can really connect, you know. So I can really like look in like look to him and say, look to him on the other side, besides basketball, because he knows like how he grew up and stuff. So yeah. So Nate's been always a role model. Yeah, Even though he of, plays a different position, yeah. yeah. That kind of leads into my next question: is um, who's who's been the biggest inspiration throughout your basketball career? Would you say um, Nate? definitely be, yeah, Nate and Patty? Okay, I think yeah, Nate and Patty, but more so Nate because, as I said, you know, Nate's been, Nate's been, he's he knows like he's from King, yeah, he knows how we grew up and what we can get distracted on and things like that. So yeah, he's been real good. I seen you. I seen you training with Patty Mills. Did, is that something he hit you up for, or? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he he hit me up um, through through Nate because he was coming down the side. He was getting ready for that um, that World Cup. So we were kind of preparing. I was preparing for New Caledonia and those type of things, and he was um, preparing for the World Cup. So yeah, so he was a real good, like real humble guy. Um, but yeah, I, I stay in touch with them whenever I need moves and stuff. I think after this seat, this NBL season, I'll definitely like because he's going to get ready for Tokyo. So I don't know if he's going to come back here and um, get prepared again, but we'll see soon. But yeah, but he's been real good. Like whenever I need moves and stuff like that, or I need to read certain things, I don't want to just hit him up and stuff like that. But um, 11 months ago, you announced that you were signing with the Brisbane Bullets, uh, which was huge mm-hmm. news. Um, I personally was super excited because um, I'm a Bullets fan. Um, yes. What made you choose the NBL and was college ever an op- uh, option? Well, maybe you choose the NBL. Like, what, why I really chose the NBL is because I needed to help out the family, you know? Like, yeah. Get the money up and, like, so, like, kind of just provide. Because like, me, I always wanted to provide for my family, um, for my mom and my mom brought me up my mom what my mom has done for me uh yeah i just wanted to give back and yeah i didn't like this like we kind of we kind of just struggled and stuff so i think it was a yeah i was just chasing the bag because regardless i can i can get to my goal anywhere through college or um college or wherever wherever else but yeah yeah just wanted to go get the bag help out my mom and yeah, and plus it was the pro level, you know, the college you could play against um, young teams, but NBL, as you see, like like the pro, like men, you know. Uh, were Bullets always in the talks? Um, were you surprised when they offered up a contract or? Oh, no, they were always on a talk because I was, I was with them the previous year as well when I was yeah. running with them for the, for the preseason. Okay. So yeah. I think I kind of got that connection with them and then the boys on the team was just like, they were good blokes, you know, yeah. just great blokes. And I think that's what, one thing for me is I need coming in if I I needed good people around me because that always helps when things are going like not your way. So I think that really helps. Um, explain the experience so far. Um, is it what you expected? Um, no, it wasn't what I expected. But I think this like this year really did really help me as a person, you know. Like the lowest, I'm not the lowest. I mean, because I've always been, um, I've always been not to be corny or anything, but like juniors, I've been top tier. Like always been, always been playing and that type of stuff. So I think now playing at this level now and being at the back foot and kind of just like just helpless. I was like, I just felt helpless. I was just like, I can't have my team on anyway. My time did come for sure. But I think it really helped that I was, I think the main thing for me this year was for me to stay engaged because I think as a young 
when playing the NBL, not playing and stuff, you tend to get distracted, you know, tend to drift away. Like, you know, what? I'm not playing. Like, I'm just going to do other things, just not engage in stuff. So I think what helped me is when I cultivate them stuff, I just stay engaged. People say stay engaged. I think for me, yeah, for me, just staying engaged, doing scout, doing extra work, just knowing your time will come, whatever. And then, yeah, my time did end up coming. Like, we had injuries. Yeah, you started a couple. Me and Blake had, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was starting a couple games. Yeah. And I think that really did show. Like if I just keep working, put in the time, my time will come. And then I end up, yeah, starting, starting five, four games, six games. And it was real good. Matching up on like key plays, like brass cutting and all that. Yeah, so it was real good. So it really shows like you just got to keep working on your game, even though things don't have uh things don't go your way. Go your way. Just keep working on your game because when the time shows up, you better be ready. So that kind of leads on to my next question, man. Um, I was at the Kings game last night. I was watching up close, mm. and I don't think did you step on the floor first half? You didn't, I don't think. No, no, no. First, no I stepped on the second in. half. Yeah, third quarter you came in and you're talking about engagement and all that stuff. You were locked in, dude. You were chasing over screen, mm. top blocking, everything. Like you, you did a job on Casper Way, man. Like you, you came in ready to go. Like you didn't you look like you've been playing 30 minutes already. Like Yeah, off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, did like, you how yeah. you how have you found that process, man? It looks like Lamanus trusts in your ability to be able to go match up with key guards and stuff. Do you have that conversation with him? And that's what he, that's your role kind of thing on your team to be able yeah. to do that? And how do you find yeah, those think- matchups? Oh yeah, for sure. I think Jade really trusts me now that I can like pick up because I like I always like I always knew that if you play defense, if you can play defense the same for the front of summer, you're bound to get minutes. So I think that's kind of my role now. Like it's different. I've always had the ability to stay in front of defense and stuff, but it's never been my role through juniors, you know. So I think Jade's definitely had that confidence and confidence in me to just stay in front of those top tier players like Casper, Brass, and just chase over screens and that type of stuff. So, yeah, so it's been real good for um, knowing scouts and stuff like that, as you said, knowing scouts, knowing, knowing which way to um, force them and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been really impressive, good. man. Like, I was watching and, like, just seeing your, like, ability to, like, I don't know, like, it was just, you look like you were really comfortable in that pro environment, like, you, you, like I said, the scout of chasing over the top and staying attached to him at all times and top blocking those pin down screens and getting him right up on him. Like it would just look like you were ready to go. And that's rare, I think, for an 18, 19 year old kid to come in or play a half of basketball, especially yeah. someone of your pedigree. Like, like you say, you've been playing 35 a game your whole career up until now, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then now, like that, that's you reckon you would have done that first game of the season, second game of the season, or that engagement would have been way harder? Yeah, it was. I wish, like, that's the one thing I wish, but you always win. But I wish I would have, like, done that at the start of the season. Yeah. I think it would have been, been way different. It would have been way different, but it would have been you no know, different because Jay would have that, that trust in me. But, yeah. But, sure. yeah. But, you like, I think young, young, up and kid, uh, young, upcom- young and upcoming talent, like, if you could get that scat done, like, it's crazy how limited people are if you know which way to force them. What's the weakness and stuff like that? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Hey, real real quick, Tamri. Obviously, mm. being Indigenous heritage, talk a little bit about about that man and what it means to be like a, a role model in your community. You've spoken about Nate and how he he's been big for you, and Patty comes back and does a lot of stuff in the community. Kind of, what does that mean to you to be like a real life example of you know what you can you can achieve at such a young age? You've you've already done so much in your basketball career. Just talk to us a little bit mm. about that. Um, it means a lot. Like obviously now, realizing that I'm, I'm a big role model now in my community. When I go back, like the way p- young kids come up and just talk, but I've always been in that position too, like looking up to Nate, what Nate's done. Because I, because growing up, as I said, like football again, looking up to Greg when Greg used to come to our home community and stuff. Like it was a different feeling. Like and that's like looking up to like indigenous players and stuff. Like I know there was it was rare in basketball. I ended up finding out like because I was into basketball later in my um later in my years like, coming to high school, but I was more I related more to football when I used to look up to Greg and what he did to the community and stuff like that. 
you just met a lot and you you straight because you get you you tend to get distracted and stuff like at school you're like you know what like you tend to be a bad kid i know for me myself i got distracted a lot but yeah. just those just those role models coming into our school and telling us you gotta do this you gotta straighten up this, this it, it, meant, it meant a lot for me yeah. and for and me to be in pulse yeah Sorry, no, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I want to, uh, are you trying to take on that role too? Like, are you now going back to the younger kids and trying to do that, set them straight and tell them kind of what you can achieve if you if you get on path? Yeah, for sure. I always go back and I always tell, like, younger, younger kids, like, if you lock in, like, this can really take you far. You can be able to provide for your family. Because I think I always tell them you can provide for your family. Because it always hit, it's always hits different when you talk about family, what you can do to help out your family through the struggles. But every time I go back home, a young kid come up and say, how can yeah. I do this? How can I, just, I always take take time out of my, to go give advice and stuff like that. Always give back. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's really good to hear. Talking on that on that same type of topic, man, um, mm. top controversy recently, um, obviously it's come up with us. I've spoken to a few people on the podcast about it. Um, just the whole, whole thing about not certain certain ethnicities and indigenous background or African background represented not being represented completely in Australian basketball. Obviously Liz Cambridge has come out and spoken about it. Ben Simmons has commented on it before. You've come up through the through the BA system, the basketball Queensland system as well. How's your experience been like w- with that type of stuff? Um it's it's been good. Like I've never had no problems with that. Mm. Um I think basketball Australia on my end for me, but it has been really good. Um I think, yeah, I've never really had my problems with that, but I did see that Liz Cambridge thing about, yeah, about that. And that is true. I have seen like a lot of star Australian athletes, and I saw that and I was like, yeah. But it's good how Liz, I like how Liz speaks up, you know? She doesn't yeah. have, she doesn't have any, um, she doesn't hold back. So I kind of I like that about her, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah it's really good. Did you notice that the the under 19s Yemi squad had like only three three white guys and, and nine non white guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw a group chat in Bali. Bali or Karen said that, and I'm like, yo, that's actually that's actually crazy. Like, like I don't think there's hasn't been a squad with that that much. Um, co- uh, <laughs> let's yeah, say color, color. we can say it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, so yes. Yeah, so I'm really proud of those boys um, because I think in the in the Af- African community here in Australia, it's like I've kind of been slept on. It's it has been slept on actually. Yeah. I'm gonna say straight up, it's it's been slept on. They had a lot of time, and then for them for because yeah, and for them to finally be recognized. Yeah, finally be recognized. Yeah be on the team it's, it's, it means a lot because my dad's side's African as well so it kind of hurts as well when I see my people getting slept on I always knew that even for indigenous boys too like there's a couple of indigenous indigenous boys that like that come up on the ranks and then just fall off because they didn't get that you know uh they get looked at like that and that's why I'm always like um proud of Wale. Buali he's come up he's he's been he's been slept on yeah, he's been slept on for for him to keep grinding through the rounds and and find and make it now and get his contract and stuff. It means a lot to see another Indigenous player up and but also coming back to the Oz team. You know, it means a lot to see brothers in the team and stuff like that. So I'm really really keen to go to battle with them in that way. Yeah, man. I I think personally, I've just been involved in coaching for a little while. I've never really played at elite levels, obviously, like like you boys have. But I think mm. seeing teams that get picked and what happens, like I'm not saying it's intentional by any means, but there's a lot more like African indigenous players that are hoopers and they can play and given the right opportunities can make a serious impact in the game that yes, they get represented for. You know what I mean? Like, And I think it's, mm. it's good. That Emu's team was kind of like, damn, like, Hopefully it's a bit of a change now. Like we can start really picking talented players now um, that, that are out there and that scouting process where we get the younger kids that have the potential, have the talent, you know, from those kind of yeah. socioeconomic regions, different different ethnicities can kind of come through now, you know? Yeah, that's 100, yeah, for sure. 
That's real good. Um, after playing this year, um, what's one thing you want to achieve next season? Um, my shot, definitely my shot. I think now getting that confidence behind it. I've worked on, I've worked on my form and that type of stuff. I've put in work. It's just me building my confidence now to get that stroke right. Sure. So yeah, definitely. Um, I saw recently you signed uh, to Capitals. You and Stoddy are going to be nice in the NBL one. Um, can yes, sir, he's been popping probably. off. Yeah, facts. Mm. He's nice. Nick Stoddy. Um, yeah. We're going to get into our fan questions. Um, we put these on our story for people to ask you. Mm. Um, the first one is, if you didn't end up going to the Bullets, what was option B? If there was one. Perth. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Perth. It would have been Perth or Sydney. That was the two other options. Damn. Nice. We were talking to yeah. Nice. Yeah. Another fan asked, who's your favourite point guard of all time? Kyrie. Okay. Kyrie, Kyrie or Kyrie? Point guard. Yeah. Kyrie. F- Steph Kyrie. Kyrie. Kyrie Evans. Kyrie Evans. Kyrie Evans. Kyrie Evans. Um, how does it feel to be among and represent as an indi- indigenous player in the NBA? I'm pretty sure you already answered that. Um, mm. But yeah. Yeah, it's always an honor. You know, you get to represent your country, uh, your culture in your own country. You know, and to be very, um, be among the few. Yeah, it means a lot. For sure. Um, someone asked, what is Coach Lamanis like? I mean, I don't know what he's referring to, but, you know, what, what, what Coach Lamont has been like for you, I guess, as a rookie. He's, he's been good. He doesn't, he hasn't, he hasn't talked to you individually that much, but he's been real good. Like, that's it. he's not the coach to go off his head and that type of stuff. Like, he really just holds you accountable for, to, to, I really accountable. Like, you're a pro, you come ready to the game, you be ready, you know? He's not, this is not the ones where he just, tears and tears and stuff like that yeah. you know he's just more he's just more like he holds you accountable you know um, and fifth one is yeah. any advice for young hoopers coming up if you had to give one piece of advice what would it be no matter what highs or lows you, you go through just always put in the work I think that's one thing I've as again this year like even if you get a little high you still you still work always work on your game hey you just see the news the news? Yeah. Tell me might have already known. He might have already known. Oh, yeah, probably. The Bullets plan to hire James Duncan as the team's next head coach. No. Oh, I never I, I heard that. You haven't heard it? Damn. I just posted no, that. I ain't heard that. James Duncan is your... He's someone from the Kings. Jeez. <laughs> Damn. That's yeah. crazy. It's not confirmed, is it, Reese? Yeah, it's confirmed. That old, that oh, old gun... Heard. Old gun, but just tweeted. Yeah, that guy's a plug. He knows everything. Yeah, facts. He's I think that's. Up. I think that's why Jason was tapping on the walls, trying to get my attention. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, it's crazy. Are you still in Sydney right now, Tom? No, 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 no. We just we just got back today. We got back today. Okay. Better. Yeah, it was nice though. That the, I like Sydney. Yeah, yeah facts. Sydney's real sweet. Yeah. We're gonna get into our ten quick questions. Um, we ask these every week. You can answer these at your own pace. Um, who do you try to replicate oh. your game after? Um, and who are you watching film of at the moment? Um, definitely Kyrie, but I've definitely um been working my game off uh, Damien, Damien Lillard, how, how he plays and stuff. I think the way, obviously, I'm gonna work on my shooting and stuff, and <laughs> just the way he comes off pick and rolls and stuff like that, and just how he reads, reads how people obviously hard show him, and then he just comes off and just pulls that trigger. So definitely him and definitely trying to get that smooth stroke to my shot. Nice. You, you, you've answered this one, but I'm going to change it up. We were initially going to ask, if not basketball, what sport would you be playing? But if it wasn't basketball or footy, is there another? Is there a third sport, like a secret talent, table tennis or something like that? Like, what's your third pick? Like, what sport? Or it could what be anything sport else. would you be playing? Would you be playing if it wasn't footy or basketball? If it wasn't footy or basketball? I'll try soccer. I yeah. think my dad always wanted me. Because I'm uh, um, African background of mine, I think my dad always wanted wanted for me to play but, um, soccer, so I'd, I'd give that a go. Um, top five artists right now. 
of Barbados. Meek baby, little baby. Meek little baby. Chris Drake. Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Yeah, Drake. Go one more. Tory Tory Lane. Yeah, Tory's nice, bro. He was same on Tory Lane. I always have this debate. I think he's one of the yeah. nicest. He is nice. He switches. He switches into any lane. Dude, he's like he's like Drake level for me, dude. In terms of his talent. Oh, I don't know about that. All right. Uh, least favorite place to travel on away games in the NBL. <laughs> you have to shit on one of the one of Australian that's cities. It. I'm sorry, Taryn, but that city. That's oh, really? I gave that. <laughs> I gave that. I gave that city uh, like two chances. It's yeah. quiet. That's yeah. quiet. <laughs> that Tazzy trip is tough. It's tough. Um, who's the most underrated player you know? Anyone you want to give a shout out to that isn't getting much, getting much shine? Taron. Taron. I think Taron does. Taron doesn't really get his like. Yeah, like you see what he's doing right now. Yeah, like, he could really do that. I think. I think he gets like put on the spotlight a little bit. And he could really play. Yeah. Tyron could really play. I've heard that from a lot of players. A lot of players yeah. around the environment have told said that Tyron is like tough. Mm. Yeah, he's like he has a like clip on him. So yeah. So, so I reckon Tyron, Tyron, Tyron really can slip him. I reckon he should be on our caliber of like hype and stuff like that. So yeah. Nice. What about the the favorite question of the top ten celebrity crush? Who is it? Celebrity cars, Bagariri. That's one. Hey. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's taking it. She's off she's off the ASAP Rocky got that now. So nah. So yeah. Oh actually no, she's not my she's not my crush. I'm a lot of her. Big lot of her. Yeah. Do you know do you know who that is? Uh, I heard the name. I don't I haven't I don't couldn't pick a face though, I don't think. She's a she's a female rapper. Yeah, Mulatto, rapper big yeah. Um, favorite meal. Favorite meal, carbonara. Yeah. I can't go wrong with that. Nice, easy. All right, I'm gonna change the question too because you've already talked about Dame. Uh, we we're gonna yeah. ask Dame and Steph, but I'm assuming it's Dame, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. no, Steph, Steph. Oh, yeah, really? Steph. I was gonna say, yeah, but... Steph and Curry. Steph. Two time, what's Steph the two-time is... MVP? That was yeah. a bit different. What about I'll, I'll add one more one 11 quick questions. Sorry, Reese. LeBron or KD? KD. Mm. Okay. Hey, I'll take I don't know. Actually, you that LeBron because cause LeBron got eliminated. <laughs> 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 no, but like I just like yeah, LeBron has like but KD's just like he's just so tough, like. I think for LeBron, you could kind of like. I know what you mean. I feel like if you he has, he has some weaknesses in his game. Yeah. He, if if you know if you know what I mean, like yeah. KD, like he can shoot whenever he wants over you, like yeah. like he yeah. has. Yeah. I feel like if they gave you life or death, you can't let this person get a bucket on you. I feel like I'd rather LeBron. They're both gonna get buckets, but I feel like KD has more of a chance to. Facts, yeah, because he guard. can shoot from anywhere. Yeah. yeah. He gets to his spot, like, and he's rising up. Cool, you can't, you can't get to that. Yeah, and he, and he could just shoot as well. I think LeBron, if I had to guard LeBron, I'd probably just sag. Yeah, just let him do that one where he just puts his head down and, <laughs> and then raises. It. Well, yeah, <laughs> he looks at the ball. Yeah. Um, hardest cover in the NBL. Who's the hardest to guard so far? Tyler Harvey. Mm. Tyler Harvey and Serbs. Okay. Can you give us a reason why? Tyler just has that thing where, like, he just pulled it so unexpectedly, you know? And then that floater that he has, I need that in my bag. Uh. Like, that floater where he could, just, he could just pull it. Like, I'll be right next to him. Like, like, I'll try to take the shot away, and then who shall make a move to go to the hoop? I'll be right there. And he'll just flick it like this. Just throws it. It's crazy. Like, nah. 
But yeah, Tyler Harvey and Serbs. Serbs is tough. Yeah. Serbs is tough. Man, how much better do you think we've gone defensively just guarding him in practice every day? So much. Like, I think, like, I've learned a lot. Done. Like, this, I've learned a lot. Like, he obviously tells me stuff and stuff like that. He's been a great help with telling me stuff, but just by off how he plays and stuff, he's helped a lot. You know, he had a, like, he just reads. Like, he'll sometimes just run into you and go like that. So sometimes yeah. you just got to, like, just read, you know? Can't put your hands in certain places. No one to like put your hand on the hips and come off pick and rolls and just things like that, you know. So sure. it's been good. And I reckon that guarding him in practice would like, definitely help me guarding Casper, Bryce Cotton, Tyler Harvey. Definitely help. One thing I've noticed about, about Sobi is that when I first started watching the NBL, he was always like talented as like ever, like obviously super athletic, can stroke it real smooth with it. But he was like mm. really one speed. Just like 100 yeah. miles an hour. This season, he's been like poised, man. He never gets pushed off his spot, like takes place at his speed. It's crazy, man. He gets Yo, rushed. Exactly. And, and, the board, and it's like, he's got 26. I'm like, when did this even happen? Like, when did he get those 26 yeah, points? It's a lot, like, 20. Nice. Like a vet, bro. Nice, like, nice. I like his game a lot. MVP for me, bro. Yeah, for sure. Just the way he plays. As I said, and that's definitely what he's been working on. And CJ, he's been working with me and so yeah. CJ always says that for me to like look at his game as well. The way he like goes underneath the hoop, nothing there, snake, snakes dribble, stuff like that, like poise and stuff. Like me, I tend to like, as I said, juniors, I, t- I go one gear. Like, I've been playing with one gear, but as you said, he's definitely working on that that, po- that poise stuff. So, yeah. like, Last question, man. Who's winning, who's winning the NBA this year? Uh, Nets definitely enough. Def- all I gotta say is Nets definitely winning. Like, Nets winning that. Yeah. Oh, I have nuts. I have nuts with that chip for sure. We're gonna wrap it up there. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, good luck in Latvia. No worries, no worries. We're gonna be rooting appreciate for you. It. Um, and yeah, good luck. Thank you, my guys. All the best. Appreciate you again. Thanks everyone for joining us uh, for episode eight. Um, we enjoyed that one with Tamri. Um, we should be back next week. Um, appreciate you guys listening again. Um, we have a giveaway coming soon. Haven't announced this yet, but we just hit 15K on Instagram and we hit 1K subs on YouTube not long ago. So we're going to be giving away a um, giddy, giddy jersey, um, a heritage jersey. So we'll put that up soon. But yeah, we appreciate you guys and yeah, we'll catch you next week.